This video is brought to you by Squarespace. This is the Fountain of Wealth in Singapore, and it was built in the 1990s and named by Guinness World Record as the world's largest fountain. And like many fountains around the world, it's become a place where people throw coins to get good luck. And that got me thinking, who owns the coins that are thrown into fountains? Can you get in trouble if you take them out? In this video, we're gonna find out. The act of throwing coins into wells or fountains isn't new and actually dates back to ancient times. Historically, people thought that water came from the gods, so there'd often be shrines put nearby and people would make some kind of offering. In Norse mythology, there's Mimi as well, and people would make some kind of donation of something valuable to drink from it. And this is a tradition and ritual which is spread around the world. This particular fountain is part of Suntec City, which is a major development here in Singapore. And it's a place which hosts restaurants, entertainment, retail and more. And the design's quite interesting. There are four buildings which represent a hand, they being the fingers and a fifth one being a thumb, and the palm of the hand is actually this fountain. This upper bit is turned off a couple of times a day so people can head inside. The tradition goes that if you do three laps with your hand in the middle, you'll get good luck. But this is just one fountain. Let's take a tour of fountains around the world and see what happens if you take coins out and how much they're worth. So I'm back in Melbourne outside the National Gallery of Victoria and this fountain in this moat is a place where coins absolutely do end up. So the question is, is it illegal to take these coins? In this case, the answer is yes. Back in 2014, someone was arrested for taking coins out of the fountain and the following day they were back in flippers, snorkel and a mask and arrested again. And this time the bail conditions include the requirement not to enter this moat at all. Now another arrest was made in 2020 by someone who also came prepared wetsuit, flippers and a snorkel. And in researching this, it does look like the city of Melbourne has restrictions. Because unless you have a permit, you cannot deposit, throw or otherwise place anything on or into any body of water that is not a swimming pool, including a fountain. And around the world, there are a lot of articles of people being arrested for taking coins from fountains. People have been investigated by police or arrested in Canada, in Italy, in the UK and in the USA. Now, it's not as high stakes as Hollywood films, but just outside of Melbourne, there was a wishing well fountain heist. It's a story that could have been penned by the Brothers Grimm. Thieves stealing money from a children's wishing well in a town called Anarchy. The total amount they got away with isn't exactly known, but it's guessed to be somewhere between five and $30,000. The most lucrative fountain in the world is surely this one in Rome. And the tradition is, is that you throw a coin over your shoulder and you'll come back to Rome, throw two and you'll fall in love, and throw three and it will end in a wedding. Three coins in the fountain. Now this has made its mark in pop culture, appearing in movies and TV shows, and even politicians have gotten in on the action. So with thousands of euros ending up in the fountain, it's no real surprise that some people wanted in on the action. And in this case, it was a local man, Roberto Cochaletta. And he spent over 30 years fishing coins out of the fountain, going in up to six nights a week and making as much as $1,000 in a day. Now he used a rake, he scooped his own hands, but he also had a magnetic device that would help scoop the coins. Now this became less effective with the introduction of Euro coins and he avoided arrest for years and years and years with police seemingly turning a blind eye before finally being arrested in 2002. Now the value of coins that get collected can vary significantly and it's not something where the data is particularly good but there have been a couple of articles which talk about how much they can receive in a year. The Mall of America in Minnesota, $24,000. The Bellagio Fountain in Las Vegas, around $12,000. Disney World, $18,000. And the 9-11 Memorial, where it's both kind of against the rules and not wanted at all, they've received around $2,735. But by far, the absolute standout is the Trevi Fountain in Rome, coming in at $1.7 million. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Generally, the bigger the fountain, the more potential money it can make. I mentioned that this previously held the Guinness World Record as the world's biggest. Well, it doesn't hold that record anymore, and I'll give you one guess about where it does. Yes, it's Dubai with the Palm Fountain, and this is over 7,000 square metres and can shoot up to 100 metres in the air. So collecting coins out of this would be no easy task, and it makes this fountain look quite quaint. So now we know how much this could be worth, who owns the coins that are left in fountains? I'm not the only one who's interested in the question about where these fountain coins end up. 
In fact, this is a question that's gone to the highest level of government. In my research, I came across this exchange and then contacted the Parliament House of Australia, who sent across this video. Now, this is from Senate Estimates, which is a chance where senators can ask people working for the government. But what happens to the money that um, the coins that are thrown into the fountains here in Parliament House? And after a bit of back and forth, they got their answer. Senator, I think it goes into our, um, <coughs> our general revenue. Which was that it goes to consolidated revenue, that is, general government funds. Now, this interaction made some news, and a new policy existed next time they came back to Senate estimates, and that was that the funds would now go to charity, in this case, UNICEF. Seem to be a happy story, I think you'd agree, wouldn't you, Ms Penfold, that uh, had a happy ending, would that be right? And as for the Trevi Fountain, this has become an issue. Historically, these coins were sent to charity, but in 2014, the Mayor of Rome indicated they should be used for government services, city-led social solidarity and assistance projects, and other council initiatives. Now, after a few weeks of this being in the press, the decision was reversed, and the funds continue to go to Caritas Rome, which is a church-run charity that does housing, soup kitchens, and other local family services. In the parks of New York, most of the money is taken out by locals, to be honest. There's not much left. That that is left is used for parks maintenance. In the Mall of America, coins go to charity, with different not-for-profits being able to apply to get a cut. In Disneyland, the funds go to support foster children locally within the state. But it's not all good news. A green sea turtle by the name of Piggy Bank had to undergo an operation by vets in Thailand. Now this seven hour operation removed 915 coins from her stomach. And sadly, the 25 year old 59 kilo turtle died not long after the surgery. So what happens to the coins that are left behind in the NGV here? Well, as you can imagine, it's a big job to clean out this moat. And in doing so, they found hundreds of kilos of coins amongst all the mud and sediment. And in this case, the coins are used as donations for the NGV. And they use the money to acquire new artwork. So unless a place is designed to receive coins, like a wishing well, it might just be better to take your coins and donate them to charities directly. Maybe you like traveling the world, taking photos of fountains, or have some other hobby. Whatever it is, if you want to share it, I recommend today's sponsor, Squarespace. They help you make beautiful websites for whatever you're interested in. It's a powerful platform with a huge range of templates to choose from, and you can simply and easily customize them to however you like it. If you want to take your project to the next level, there's plenty of e-commerce options. You can create storage, stock, and sales simply using Squarespace. And you can share any posts easily on social media. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Julie O'Shea to get 10% off your first website or domain. And that's what happens to your money when you throw it in a fountain. I'm Julian O'Shea. If you enjoyed that, subscribe or watch some more videos. That's it from me. The most lucrative fountain in the world is here in Rome. Not here. <laughs>